Hey, this is John Carlos, and I'm here with a look at the Marvel Legends action figure of Daredevil from, uh, I forget the name of that show. Even though we get Season 2 figures like Elektra and Punisher in this wave, the Daredevil figure appears to be his outfit from Season 1. And I'm okay with that because, well, the body was very similar in Season 2 than it was in Season 1. Uh, I prefer the cowl from Season 2. But still, this is a pretty good cowl. All in all, this is still a rad figure. Just your mileage may vary about which version of the cowl you like. Um, but the overall details of this figure are great. I love when uh, Hasbro makes unique movie and now TV show figures compared to when they make Marvel Legends comic book figures. Because the comic book figures allow them to reuse the same body parts over and over and over again and just repaint them. And they've been using these same body parts for years and years and years, but the movie figures cause them to be more unique. And uh, these unique parts, uh, based on, you know, like newer techniques, allow for better detailing. I mean, I'm just showing you like the legs right now, but you can see just the texture alone of the surface of the fabric of the costume looks great. The uh, sculpt of the boots here is neat, the little different levels of the boots, but just look at the texture of the pants there. Really strong work, and the paint is really clean between the burgundy and the black elements. Also, the silver elements look really, really good. Uh, if I wanted to be really nitpicky, I would just point out that, see these little tiny silver rivets right there on the belt? They could have included those right there and like on the little shoulder areas. But, uh, oh, I mean, the, the figure doesn't suffer for it. Oh, well. But they could have included that. But that's a minor gripe because this figure just has a great presence on the shelf. The details of it are awesome. Even just the different little levels of the costume, not just the texture, but just the, the chest, you know, with the burgundy overlapping the black there. there the, the difference in just the little, uh, like the raised height of the, of the fabric looks great. Uh, here's a look at the back of the figure. Um, looks pretty good to how it does in the show. Um, there's his uh, Daredevil butt, if you care. And then there's the little holsters right there, which I can show you later. The billy clubs uh, kind of don't fit, and it's a little tight. But uh, look, everything I've showed you as far as black and burgundy, really, really clean separations. Even like his gloves, the little things going down the sides, the little gauntlets look really, really good. The little, uh, the little tightness of those lines on the glove look great. Now let's get to the head. I do like this head. Um, I kind of wish they'd gone with the uh, you know the later part of season two after because he had this this cow at the end of season one and then the first like three episodes of season two it was essentially this but black um, with this little diamond section in the front of his head creating these big arches. Uh, later he gets a newer cowl that kind of goes over the ear and allows black fabric to be where the ear is so you don't have that little like robo ear effect going there. Um, but that's just me talking about the costume design. The actual figure here, the, the again the black lines going around here, the, the textures of the black against the, the smooth red, really really awesome. This is maybe one of the cleanest figures I've seen Hasbro put out in a while. Aside from the mouth area, which we got to talk about. I saw five of these in stores, and holy sweet goddamn was the paint terrible on all of them. This was the most decent one I found. The skin paint bled onto the, the side black cheek thing of all of them. Just skin paint all over. Um, the, the sort of gray paint they're using to smear to create stubble isn't very convincing. And then the pink lip paint I saw a lot where just the lips were kind of all over the place. Um, the sculpt of the mouth is pretty good. You do get the uh, Matt Murdock smirk there, so that's pretty good. If the face looks a little awkward, it looks about as awkward as it does in the show, to be honest. So this is a good reflection of, you know, the Netflix Daredevil, you know, as a figure. Like, his head looks appropriately weird. Uh, articulation, you know, you got the hinge swiveling ankles. The there is, There's a double knee joint. There's no boot cut. There is a mid-thigh cut. They got the full range of motion at the legs. There is a waist cut and a mid-torso, like, crunch. There's a ball hinged shoulder. Um, there is a bicep cut, which is nice. There is no swiveling elbow, but there is double elbow joints. So that's neato. And then the head has a ball joint inside the head and a hinge at the base of the neck. Also, we have swiveling and hinging side to side wrists. This figure comes with several accessories, including this alternate man thing head, which I find really interesting. I'm going to go ahead and pop that on now. Just kidding, this is part of the Man-Thing Build-A-Figure. But it does come with alternate hands. It's got little fisticuff hands. Uh, but I prefer the grip ones because they can grip the billy clubs. Which, uh, you know, there's a little hole at one end. You can kind of plug them in together like so. The only problem is in the packaging, 
this one was bent a little bit, but you know, I can boil some water and straighten it out. But uh, yeah, they do separate and they look really simple and clean. They look like, well, how they should look. So, you know, they're simple. Good job to Hasbro for getting that right. Um, and I will try to put one into the leg holster now to show you. It's a little tight, but it is doable. If you really force it in there a bit, but, uh, you know, I'm not really going to be displaying him with them in his uh, leg holster. The articulation on this figure is pretty strong and allows you to get the figure into some pretty cool poses. That's one of the strengths of this figure, besides the obvious good paint job and strong articulation. Even like that joint inside the uh, head, just the slightest head tilt really does like add a lot as far as, you know, having the head all the way up or all the way down. Um, every little piece of articulation on this really allows you to get him in some really cool poses. Strikes a strong presence on the shelf. Uh, Despite my complaints about, you know, the bad paint jobs out there, if you can find a good one, this is a freaking rad figure, well worth your 20 bucks or so. Thanks for watching, everybody, and follow me on Instagram and Facebook and all that crap.